The ancient Dead Sea Scrolls show how Azazel, the fallen angel, may be the beast of Revelation. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, I think the beast is a Roman leader or an Islamic leader, or maybe even the Pope. There are lots of theories about the human aspect of the beast, but in Revelation 17, we learn the beast is more than just a human. There is a demon who possesses the man who will be the Antichrist, a demon that comes out of the bottomless pit. So no matter who the human Antichrist is or where he comes from, the demon that possesses him is what we're talking about today. And we think it's likely someone known as Azazel. You might be asking yourself, who in the world is Azazel? Well, he is a demon with seven heads. He is in the bottomless pit right now, and he will eventually be thrown into the lake of fire. <laughs> Sounds an awful lot like the beast of Revelation, doesn't he? And he is related to the Jewish calendar's most solemn and holy day, Yom Kippur, a day of mourning for sin and a day of fasting. On that day, in the time of the temple, two goats were sacrificed, one for the Lord and one for Azazel. <laughs> Why is Azazel part of the most solemn ceremony in all of Judaism? And on that exact day, Yom Kippur, in the end times, Jesus will return to fight Armageddon. Now, Azazel also tried to stop the Abrahamic covenant from even being made. And his name is similar to Nimrod's name. Wow, that is a lot to cover today. He is quite a demon, considering most Christians have never heard of him. But before we begin, a quick shout out to Fisherman and the rest of our advisory team who have done extensive research for this channel on this topic. Now, Azazel is found in two separate Dead Sea Scrolls and in the Bible. The name Azazel appears three times in Leviticus 16, verses 8 through 10, but nowhere else in Scripture do we find out who Azazel is. It is interesting that Moses uses that name, and Scripture simply assumes that everyone knows what it means. And it's, it's not even repeated or explained anywhere else in Scripture, but Azazel is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Only by reading these scrolls can we find the history and activities of Azazel. And when you see those accounts, you will completely understand why Azazel is part of the Yom Kippur ceremony, and why we think he is the likely beast of Revelation. The biblical references are the ones we know are 100% true. They are part of the word of God, after all. The two Dead Sea Scrolls we're referencing, the Book of Enoch and the Apocalypse of Abraham, are not canonical. But that doesn't mean these particular references to Azazel aren't accurate. Portions of these books could be accurate. For instance, the book of Jude in the Bible quotes the book of Enoch. Obviously, that passage that's quoted is inspired. Plus, it is entirely likely that the Apostle John, who wrote Revelation, and the early Christians who read it, knew about both of these two earlier books, Enoch and the Apocalypse of Abraham. So, when they read that the beast from the bottomless pit had seven heads, they would immediately connect that image in Revelation with Azazel, the only other seven-headed creature in Jewish literature. So just because these two Dead Sea Scrolls are not canonical doesn't mean we shouldn't use them as a reference of sorts as we examine Azazel. They're not inspired, they're not part of the canon, but it doesn't mean they aren't useful in understanding what a first century Christian would understand. However, let's begin with the three biblical references. And he, Aaron, shall take from the congregation of the people two male goats for a sin offering. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one for the Lord, and the other lot for Azazel. And Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord and use it as a sin offering. But the goat 
on which the lot fell for Azazel, shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away into the wilderness to Azazel. Leviticus 16, 8-11. So the name Azazel appears three times in this passage, never to appear in Scripture again. But that doesn't mean he isn't the beast. In this ceremony, Aaron was to select two nearly identical goats and cast lots, selecting one for the Lord and one for Azazel. The one for the Lord would be sacrificed for sin, but the one for Azazel would have the sin of the entire nation placed upon it. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? (laughs) Just as Jesus had the sin of the whole world placed on him at the cross. So we continue. The goat for Azazel then had a scarlet cord attached to it, just like the scarlet cord of Rahab the harlot, the one that she hung in her window in Jericho, the one that saved her and her entire family. The goat for Azazel would then be driven out into the wilderness and taken to a steep cliff. There it would die on the rocks below. It carried the sin of the people outside the camp for that reason. It became known as the scapegoat, the one who carried the sin to Azazel, who was the source of the sin. Keep that in mind. This scarlet cord has an amazing history. According to the Jewish Talmud, the writings of the rabbis, during the 40 years prior to A.D. 30, the thread, the cord, turned white as snow as soon as the goat was thrown over the precipice, a miraculous sign that the sins of the people were forgiven. However, from 30 A.D. to 70 A.D., the year the temple was destroyed, it stayed scarlet, proof The people's sin was no longer forgiven by this sacrifice. Why? Why 30 AD? Well, it's likely that that's the year Jesus was crucified. And in that crucial year, 30 AD, that year, the cord stopped turning white. That was the year of Jesus's sacrifice, that Jesus's sacrifice would take away the sins of the nation if they believed on him instead of this goat. However, because the majority of Jews didn't place their faith in Jesus and his sacrifice, the sin of a nation remained and the cord stayed scarlet. That's amazing proof to me of Jesus's divinity and the power of his sacrifice. And this proof wasn't found in Christian writings, but in non-believing Jewish writings. The rabbis were given signs that Jesus' death on the cross forgave sins. They just didn't believe them or didn't understand them. The color of the cord scarlet is also a very interesting clue that Azazel is the beast. People often wonder why in the book of Revelation that Satan the dragon is red and the beast is scarlet. Two slightly different colors. Here's your answer. A scarlet cord was tied to the goat for Azazel. Scarlet is associated with the beast and that goat and Azazel. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, there are numerous other references to Azazel. The first one in the Book of Enoch, a passage that really explains who he is and makes it clear why Azazel was part of this Yom Kippur ceremony. In Enoch, Azazel is one of the leaders of the rebellious watchers who married human women in the time preceding the flood. He also taught men the art of warfare, of making swords, knives, shields, coats of mail, and taught women the art of enticing men by ornamenting their body, dyeing their hair, and painting their face and eyebrows. And he also revealed to the people the secrets of witchcraft. This led the people of that day into wickedness and impurity. Here's what Enoch has to say. The whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. Book of Enoch 10.8 Azazel was said to be a major source of sin and depravity on the earth. Enoch instructs his readers to ascribe all sin to him. So he is the one, the goat with sin, the sin of a whole nation, is taken to in the Yom Kippur ceremony. He is the one to whom the sin is given back, 
since he's its source. The goat is to take the sin back to Azazel in the bottomless pit. Now, many wonder how Azazel got into the bottomless pit in the first place. It happened at God's command. Enoch says the demon was bound hand and foot by the archangel Raphael and chained to the rough and jagged rocks of ha Dudel. So he matches another aspect of the beast. He is in the bottomless pit right now, a holding area for demonic creatures. We know from Revelation 17, 8, that the beast demon comes out of the bottomless pit. So this is another possible link to the beast of Revelation. Now, why are there two goats, though, you might be asking, in the Yom Kippur ceremony? Well, Jesus had two natures. He is 100% God and 100% man. That's why the two goats were nearly identical. The aspect of him that's 100% God is represented by the goat who is for the Lord and the one that was sacrificed for sin. The goat that is for Azazel is representative of Jesus' human nature. And he carried that sin of the whole world after the cross into the bottomless pit after his death and burial. He then left it there and arose with a group of Old Testament saints, probably the 24 elders. So if you have wondered about this very strange ceremony, that's its meaning. There are two ways Jesus saved us from our sin by dying for our sins and also by taking the sin of the world and giving it back to Azazel. The two goats also represent two lots, the lot of God and the lot of Azazel. Those humans who will end up with Jesus forever, those he redeems, are the lot of God. And the lot of Azazel are those who will enter the lake of fire with him in an eternity. In another Dead Sea Scroll, Another extra-canonical text, the Apocalypse of Abraham, we read this about God's promise to Abraham. And the Eternal Mighty One said to me, Abraham, Abraham, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Look from on high at the stars which are beneath you and count them for me and tell me their number. And I said, Would I be able? For I am but a man. And he said to me, as the number of the stars and their host, so shall I make your seed into a company of nations set apart for me and my lot from Azazel. Abraham 20, 1 through 5. So God has a lot and Azazel has a lot. All humans fall into one of these two lots. In chapter 23, verse 7 of this same book, Azazel is described as having seven heads. 14 faces, hands and feet like a man, and on his back, six wings on the right, six wings on the left. Yes, seven heads. This cannot be a coincidence, in my opinion. John was very likely familiar with these Dead Sea Scroll-type books in his day, as were a lot of early Christians. So when John described the beast as having seven heads, his readers would immediately understand that he likely meant Azazel. Plus, Azazel's final fate is identical to that of the beast. In Revelation 19.20, the beast and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire. In Enoch 2.8, we learn, on that day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire. And that's not the end of the similarities between Azazel and the beast. Elsewhere in the Apocalypse of Abraham, Azazel is portrayed as an unclean bird who came down upon the sacrifice that Abraham prepared. This is in reference to Genesis 15, 11. Birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. It's also a reference to Mystery Babylon. And Revelation 18, 2, fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird. That's Azazel a hunt for every unclean and detestable beast. Everyone wonders about that line about an unclean bird. Azazel with his 12 wings is that unclean bird. Let's look at the interchange between Azazel and Abraham as he tries to stop the Abrahamic covenant from taking place. And the unclean bird spoke to me and said, what are you doing, Abraham, on the holy heights? 
where no one eats or drinks, nor is there upon them food for men. But these all will be consumed by fire and ascend to the height. They will destroy you. It came to pass when I saw the bird speaking, I said this to the angel beside me, What is this, my Lord? And he said, This is disgrace. This is Azazel. And he said to him, Shame on you, Azazel, for Abraham's portion is in heaven, and yours is on earth, for you have selected here, and become enamored of the dwelling place of your blemish. Therefore the eternal ruler, the mighty one, has given you a dwelling on earth. Though you, the all-evil spirit, a liar, and threw you wrath and trials on the generations of men who live impiously. Abraham 13, 4 through 9. I find that all very, very interesting. Azazel was trying to prevent the Abrahamic covenant from being cut. The very covenant where God promised Abraham to die himself if Abraham broke it. And that's exactly, of course, what Jesus did on the cross. So Azazel was trying to stop the cross from happening back at that time. So is Azazel the beast that was back in the days of the flood and up to Abraham? Is not because he was cast into the bottomless pit and will rise out of the bottomless pit in the end times. Sure seems like that to me. Let's look at all the clues. He's a fallen angel, a watcher. He is now currently in the bottomless pit. He was described as being the source of sin. He was mentioned in the most sacred ceremony of the Jewish year on Yom Kippur, the very day Jesus comes back to fight Armageddon. He was described as having seven heads, and he will be thrown into the lake of fire on Judgment Day, also Yom Kippur. In Revelation 17, 11 through 12, we're told the beast was one of the seven original kings that made the heads up of the beast. We know since it already was but is not in John's day, we can narrow this down to the first five heads. Babel, Egypt, Syria, Persia, and Greece. Let's look at the name Azazel and figure out which one. According to the Peshitta, which is the Syrian um, Old Testament, the name Azazel is rendered Zazael, strong one against God. This name or title is very similar to the epithet applied to Nimrod as being a mighty hunter before God or before the face of God or opposed to God. I find that relationship with Nimrod very, very interesting as well. So it's my guess Azazel was the beast that possessed Nimrod and attempted to have the Tower of Babel built. Am I right on that? I don't know. It's just a guess, but it's an educated guess. Now, where will Azazel have his greatest strength in the end times? Ah, very interesting. Where will he likely arise? According to the book of Enoch, Azazel is the chief of the Seirim, the hairy ones. The Seirim are goat demons who haunted the desert and to whom most primitive Semitic tribes offered sacrifices. Israeli king Jeroboam may have appointed priests to the Seirim in 2 Chronicles 11.15. But Josiah destroyed the place of their worship in 2 Kings 23.19. Those are interesting passages to look up. The Seraim are also mentioned in Leviticus 17.7 and Isaiah 34.14, where it says that the Seraim greet each other among the runes of Edom. So Azazel is associated with Edom as well. This may explain part of the reason why Edom is destroyed on the day of the Lord. There seems to be a link between Edom and Azazel. The Dead Sea Scrolls also show how Jesus will undo the Great Reset, now imagined by Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates. Click right here to keep watching and find out what both the Bible and the Dead Sea Scrolls have to say about what is going to stop the Great Reset. Till then, this is Nelson. And I'll see you there.